Good morning. It is May the 2nd, and it's a beautiful, beautiful day, and I'm so glad to be a part of your devotion this morning, your meditation this morning. Maybe you are uh, having a cup of coffee, and you're having Bible study, and you're getting ready to start your day. I don't know what all your day includes. It kind of feels like right now every day is Saturday to a lot of us, but um, today we're going to be studying Psalm 30, and let me just tell you that we will be taking communion today, so if you don't have your elements, run and get them right now, uh, get whatever you'd like to take communion with, and um, we're going to get started here in just a couple of seconds. I just, um, as, um, as I'm looking at the screen, I see this alien object that's right here over my head that's actually the reflection of the lights up above my head that kind of looks like an by the way i do not believe in aliens if you do don't send me don't send me any texts because that's okay i love you and you love me and we're all gonna be kind to each other are you ready all right it's a beautiful 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 day I'm super excited. Yesterday it was nice here. I got to get out and walk my dog and I worked on my yard. I worked on my little balcony up there. And um, as soon as I have it all finished, uh, I'll take some pictures. Or I'll just take uh, my phone out there and I'll show you uh, our back porch and uh, all the fruit of my labor. But for today, we're gonna get right into the word. I do not have Bible study on Saturday mornings because um, I know you want to be a part of your um, morning service. And, and I know you can watch it whenever, so that makes it unusual. But Sunday's kind of my day off, I guess. And so um, I will see you again on Monday morning. But for right now, we're going to be study, studying Psalm 30. Psalm 30. It's powerful. It's such a good psalm. I don't know if you've noticed this in your life, but in my life, I feel like every psalm, psalm that we do, I'm thinking, oh, that's kind of my favorite psalm now. I mean, you know, that one really speaks to me. That one really comes into my spirit today. And so today we're going to be studying Psalm 30. It's got one of my absolute favorite uh, scriptures in it. And uh, let's just see what you think. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for your mercy. Lord, I thank you that you've given into our hands all we need today. That your grace is sufficient for every situation in our life. And this morning, we call on you to join us here as we open your word, that you would open our mind, that you would open our spiritual eyes, that you would open our spirits. And we thank you for this day. In Christ's name, amen. Now, whatever you're eating or drinking there, you'll have to bless that yourself. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Everybody is saying good morning. We are on Psalm 30 today. Um, good morning, my Stephanie. It's my little sweet daughter. Stephanie Bernard is my baby girl. All right, so are you ready? All right, Psalm 30. This is a, a psalm, so it's a song, and it says, I exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. It starts off with an exaltation. Oh, I will exalt you, O Lord. When it says I will, that means I've decided I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do this. That's what strong will means. Oh, I have a strong will. I will exalt you, O Lord. I was listening this morning uh, on uh, my Alexa, and I said, Alexa, play Larnell Harris. It's uh, been a while since I've listened to him, and if his uh, music, and he started writing with, when my praise comes from a sacrifice. When it is sacrifice for me to praise, I will. When it is a sacrifice for me to praise, I will. 
There are times when it is, <clears throat> there are times when it is very difficult for us to give a praise, maybe because of a physical thing, maybe because uh, of a terrible sore throat. M maybe it's from a mental thing, an emotional thing, where it's like, I just feel like the weight of the world is on my shoulders. I just feel like I'm being crushed, but I will praise you, oh Lord. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation, I, I think probably you have, because I certainly have, where there's just one thing after the other, and, and then you go into church on Sunday morning, and you're standing there, and you're and in our church, we have the unbelievable privilege of having Reverend uh, Rosalind Lynch lead our praise and worship. She's our worship leader and our uh, worship pastor. And uh, Rosalind will start singing with that gorgeous big voice of hers. And before I know it, that spirit has lifted off of me and I'm singing with her and I'm praising God with her and I'm glorifying his name. Yes, sometimes we are in the middle of stuff that makes it hard for us to say these things. But David is saying, I will exalt you, O oh Lord. I'll do it. I'm going to praise you. And I'm going to praise you and I'm going to keep on praising you for one thing, because you lifted me out of the depths. You lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Have you ever been in a situation where you were just in a bad, bad place and other people knew about it instead of them helping you? They were adding to it by like, well, that's what you get, girl. Ha! Ah! I knew you were going to get that. I knew that was going to happen to you. I mean, I think sometimes we gloat over our enemies. I think sometimes when people that we know, they get in trouble, we kind of want to say, I knew that was going to happen to you. Ah, I'm not sorry that happened. But David is saying, you know these people... When I was down in the depths, when I was down in a bad place, you kept them from gloating over me. Either you shut up their mouths or you covered their eyes, but you kept them from gloating over me. And then he says in Psalm 30 and 2, <clears throat> Oh, Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. Oh, Lord, my God, I called for you to help me and you healed me. When David says, I call to you for help, and you healed me, I think of the many, many, many times we've prayed with people, or we ourselves have prayed for something, and just, it seems like almost immediately, God's just sent that healing flood in. So David is saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to praise you because you brought me out of the pit, you made sure my enemies didn't gloat over me, and oh my goodness, you healed me. I called on you and you healed me. So you lifted me. You healed me. And then, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, you brought me up from the grave. I was in hell. I was in hell. I was in condemnation. I was in destruction. I was in a hellish situation. I was, I was in the pit. You know, sometimes we say, oh, my life right now is the pits. Sometimes, sometimes it feels like the enemy has just gotten such a strong hold on us that he's just dragging us and dragging us and dragging us down. I like to think of God taking his big old hedge clippers and just cutting that cord so that we're free. It said, I was being drugged down to the grave, but you spared me. So Psalm 31, 2 and 3 says, you lifted me, you healed me, you brought me up, you spared me. That alone would be the reason for us to praise God the rest of the day, the rest of our lives. You lifted me, you healed me, you brought me up and you spared me. Where were you headed to hell? And where are you headed now? 
to heaven because he lifted you, he healed you, he brought you up, and he spared you. Um, Steve and I used to know a young woman, and she used to say all the time it was the dumbest thing. It, I don't know why God didn't just kill me in the cradle. What a dumb thing to say. What a stupid thing to say. If I was, you know, who I am now, and I could go back and say that to her, I would say that's a stupid thing to say. God didn't kill you in the cradle because he made you. He created you. He knew you would come into situations that were going to be bad. He knew you were going to come into situations that were awkward. He knew you were going to come into situations where the enemy tried to snare your feet up and trip you up and cause you to fall. But instead, instead of killing you in the cradle, stupid thing to say, David says, no, I'm going to exalt you. You lifted me, you healed me, you brought me up, you spared me. When my life was at the brink of death, you healed me and you spared me. Then the story changes a little bit because the first things are, uh, I'm, I'm pray this is why I'm praising you, God. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, uh, this is why I'm praising you because of all these things you've done for me. But then he's, now he's kind of preaching to us. And it said, and I'm in Psalm 30 and 4, Sing to the Lord, you saint of his. Praise his holy name. Sing to the Lord, you saint of his. Praise his holy name. I have a cousin, Mark Collins, and he can play the piano like angels playing the piano. And I imagine that when Mark is playing the piano and singing, what a glorious song that is to God. But it's no more glorious that when I'm standing out here on my back porch or I'm here in my kitchen and I'm singing to the top of my lungs. And let me tell you what I was thinking about yesterday because I had the music in the house turned up really loud so I could hear it out on the back porch while I was working on the house and, and working on different things. And I was singing this song at the top of my lungs and I was thinking to myself, that sounds so good. I'm going to sing that tomorrow in Bible study. And then I thought, and I could do it because there's no way whoever it is that governs what is sung on Facebook, they wouldn't recognize that song. Because of my voice, because of my tune. But listen, God recognized it. God knew it. God heard that song come out of me. And it was as pleasing to him as when Mark Collins plays that piano and sings. When we are singing songs of praise, when we are singing songs that glorify him, that praise his holy name, we exalt him in that way. We exalt him in that way. I know sometimes you can hear these beautiful birds that are singing just out here. And their voice is so gorgeous. It's so beautiful. And then I love the thought that if nature praises him, I'm sure going to praise him. So David is saying, hey, sing to the Lord, you saint of his. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Then it says, his anger lasts only a moment. For his anger lasts only a moment. Just a moment. There are things that we do that are not pleasing to God. Does that mean we're separated from his love? No, it does not. Nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Does it mean he's not happy with what we're doing? Yeah, it means that. It means that. There are things that, that we do that are not pleasing to God, that do not please him, that do not thrill his spirit, do not cause him to dance over us. But that only lasts a moment. And here's why it only lasts a moment. Because if you are a child of God and you're living in obedience and you step out of line, then God has this way of, of pulling us back in, of reminding us, that's not who you are. That's not who you are, Jan. That's not who you are. That's not like you. 
But it says his anger lasts only a moment, but then look at, I'm in Psalm 30, verse 5, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Lasts a lifetime. It also means it goes into generations. His favor goes into generations. So his anger, his anger is very short. His anger is very short. Because as soon as we turn back around, his favor, his love is back on us. And that favor, it doesn't last just through our lifetime. But think about that. Think about living your whole life in God's favor. Because it's not just one of those possible things. It's a very real thing. It is how all of us are striving to live our lives. We're striving to live our lives. Because we've turned away. And all of us have done that. Don't sit there and say, well, I've never even turned away. Yes, you have. Come on. And his anger was just like that. But then as you turned back towards him, his favor, his favor, his anger is this. His favor, your lifetime, and then into your generations. Into your generations. Then it says, and this is one of my absolute favorite scriptures in the Bible, weeping may remain, or weeping may endure for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. We might lie in our bed and cry and cry, but rejoicing, joy, joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning, when you can once again take that deep breath, when you can once again make a sigh, when you can once again wipe your tears, raise your hands, and once again exalt your Lord, praise his holy name, sing songs to him, sing hymns to him, this morning, I started my day by listening to uh, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Through many trials, we've come, and His grace has brought us through so far, and His grace, His favor, will continue through our lifetime. A lifetime of favor. A lifetime of favor. A lifetime of favor. That means as you're drawing your last breath, you're drawing your last breath, and then your next breath is in the face of God. A lifetime of favor through your generations. Those of us who have children, those of us who have uh, grandchildren, some of you have great grandchildren and are, are nieces or great nieces or great nephews. I have some of the sweetest, cutest little great nieces and nephews. I have wonderful, beautiful, beautiful. I have four the sweetest nieces that God ever created. And I have one nephew, just one, and he is adorable also. And to think that the lifetime extends into generations, into my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and so on, and also into my sister's uh, children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. Think about generations going through a lifetime of rejoicing, going through a lifetime of knowing God's favor. Then David says, I'm in Psalm 30, number 6. When I felt secure, I said, I will not be shaken. Oh, Lord, when you favored me, you made my mountain stand firm. So when we're in a good place, when we are in a place of peace, when we are in a place of happiness, when we are in a place of financial security, when we are in all of those places, when we are in standing tall, you know, I don't today owe anybody any money, I don't think. Um, I think I'm good. I think I'm paid up on my mortgage and uh, all of these things. My children are all doing well. Uh, well, 
it, you know, anybody can praise God then. And when it felt secure, when I felt secure, I said, oh, I'll never be shaken. Huh. Nobody could ever ruin this. Look at where I am. Look at how my life is. But then it says, but when you hid your face, I was dismayed. I was dismayed. I was, I was just devastated. That's why when these things happen in our lives, we feel compelled to come back to him. That's why when there's horror in our life, we search him for hope. That's why when there's a pandemic going on, we search him for peace. I was dismayed because the next verse says, to you, O Lord, I called. I, recognized I was in a bad place. I recognized I'd left my, let myself slide back a little bit. I recognized I'd let myself wander off his path for me. I recognized that I was doing the wrong thing. I recognized that I was at the wrong place. I recognized that I was messing around with something I did not need to mess around with. I recognized those things. And David did too because then he says, to you, O Lord, I called. And to you, Lord, I cried for mercy. I, I cried for mercy. I, I turned around for a little while. But then I realized, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'm not standing in God's presence anymore. So to you I called, I cried. And then David is saying, Lord, because listen, I have to turn back around because if, if I'm not walking with you, if I'm not living with you, if I'm not obedient to you, then David said, what gain is there in my destruction? What, what good is it if I'm silenced? What testimony will go forth if I'm silenced? What if I go down into hell? If I go down into hellish places? If I go down into bad places? Then what good is my testimony to you? Will the dust praise you? No. These birds are. Will it proclaim your faithfulness? No. Hear all Lord, and be merciful to me. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. Apply that to me. Apply that to me today, Lord. Apply that back into my heart. And be my help. So he's, he's saying, oh, Lord, be merciful to me. Be my help. You remember just a few verses back, he was saying, hey, I cried to you. I called out to you. And you did all of these. You, you lifted me, you healed me, you brought me up, you spared me, you favored me, you gave me joy. So David is saying once again, Lord, hey, I got off on the wrong path and I'm turning back around. I'm turning back around. Hear, O oh Lord, and be merciful to me. Hear, O oh Lord, and be merciful to me because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn back around. I'm going to need your help to turn me back around. I, I am the person that GPS was created for. God looked down, he took mercy on me, and he said, uh, that girl's going to need some help or she's going to get lost up in D.C. And, and before, before GPS, I got lost all the time, all the time. Everywhere I went, I got lost, and I began to get kind of frantic about it, and then I got GPS, and now, <clears throat> now, if I make a wrong turn, my, uh, I have uh, ways and I have maps on my cell phone, and now when I make a wrong turn, it immediately goes into, and may, maybe some of you have never seen this on your phone because you never get lost, but then it immediately goes into rerouting, 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 and then it shows me how to turn around and get back on the right path. Because without that GPS, I don't know where I am half the time. But with that GPS, I can come visit all of you. I can go to the hospitals and do visits. 
I can go to Baltimore and go anywhere I need to go. I can go down into Annapolis and go anywhere I need to go. I can go down in Virginia and go anywhere I need to do. I can do ministry on my own if my husband is busy because I have GPS. God is our GPS. I was created. <laughs> I was created to follow his GPS. I was created to turn around when he said turn around. He says, be merciful to me. Please be my help. And then it must have worked. Because here's my other favorite scripture. It says, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth, which would, of course, um, show, you know, mourning, grief, extreme anguish. You removed my sackcloth and you clothed me with joy. You took away all those old rags that I wrapped myself up in because I was in such a bad place. You took away those clothes that smell like smoke or alcohol or, or bad people. And instead you clothed me with garments of joy. Garments of joy that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord, my God. I will give you thanks forever. My voice will not be silenced. I cannot be stifled. I'm just going to shout and I'm going to praise and I'm going, and who cares what the neighbors think? Who cares what the devil thinks? I hope the devil can't hear it. I hope the devil... Every time any of us sing today, I hope the devil is just like, I hate them. I hope the devil hates you today. I hope he does. I hope he's so sick of you. He says, I'm just, ugh, I'm going to take a break from her because she is miserable and mean to me. I do. So today we're going to dance. We're going to sing. We're going to thank God that he turned us around. We thank God that he lifted us up, that he spared us, that he gave us favor, that he shows joy into our life, that he took off these old rat clothes that we chose for ourselves. Instead, he clothed us with joy. Instead, he clothed us with peace. He clothed us with peace that just passes all understanding. But that joy, joy, joy down in my heart. That joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Um, there's this song, if you want joy, you must clap for it. If you want joy, you must sing for it. Hey, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I just went to my, I'm not sure what happened, said poor connection, but now I'm on my cell phone and my iPad. So we're going to take communion. We're going to take communion because I will not be shut up today. I will not down today the devil is a liar all right are you ready so let's take our communion elements let's take our communion elements i know my sisters are watching and uh i think my niece molly is but i know my niece amanda is and i just want to say that when steve and i take communion every day we have a long list of uh, people that we pray for but we also, every day, of course, pray for um, our children and our grandchildren and my sisters. And let me just tell you guys, I don't know how many of you know my niece, Amanda, but she is a thrill to my heart. She is a thrill to my heart. And Amanda, we have taken communion for you so many times. Amanda recently had a really bad fall and broke her wrist, and it was her left wrist, and she's left-handed, and she's an artist. And so I am thrilled to tell you that God has taken care of that and God has healed that. And, and uh, uh, I know my niece Molly is watching today because Sherry just let me know that. And so uh, Molly, you know, I'm praying for you and I take communion for you. And, and in this way, we're able to take it together. So if you would raise up the wafer or the cracker or whatever you have, but raise that up because this represents the body of Jesus. When on that day he was crucified and he took those lashes 
and when he was crucified, when he took those lashes, he did that for you and he did that for me. Because it says that on that day, we are healed. Not we could be, not we will be, we are healed. So take that element into your body and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Steve's sweet little grandmother used to say, as she would pray over us, I pray the blood of Jesus over you. I pray the blood of Jesus over you. This is like getting a blood transfusion. If you need healing in your body, this is a blood transfusion. If you need healing in your emotions, let God heal you today. If you need healing in your spirit, let God heal you today. If there are things in your life that you just need healing from, let God heal you today. Let God turn you around today. Turn around and serve a mighty God. So today, by the blood of Jesus, you say this, by the blood of Jesus, I am healed. Or maybe you're praying for somebody in your household or somebody else in your family. You say, by the blood of Jesus. John Swan, by the blood of Jesus, today is healed. Sally, by the blood of Jesus, you are healed. Lorraine, by the blood of Jesus, you are healed. Marion, by the blood of Jesus, your family members are healed. We pray this today, and we take this juice together. Oh, Jesus, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you for your healing powers. Lord, we thank you for your healing powers. We thank you for healing our nation. We thank you for healing our children. We thank you for healing us today, Lord. Lord, we pray today that in Jesus' name, that as this juice, as this cracker goes into our system, into our body, Lord, that we are receiving you into our body. We are becoming whole through the blood of Jesus. We are becoming whole through the blood of Jesus. Lord, you've turned our wailing into dancing. You've turned our night of crying into a morning of rejoicing. And today, I will exalt you, O oh God. You've lifted me. You've saved me. You've brought me up. You've spared me. You've favored me. Now, Lord, I pray that you will have also healed me. In the mighty name of Jesus, 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 Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. I love you guys so much. You, you'll never know how I've treasured all of these times together. I don't take it for granted that you take this time out of your day to join with me. I can't be right there with you, but I'm so glad that I can kind of be right there with you. Uh, Dion Getz uh, is a sweet friend of mine from years and years and years and years, years and years. She's much older than me, but Dion and I are really good friends. That's a lie, I'm older than Dion. And she mentioned yesterday or maybe this morning that she wanted a caramel cake. And I said, uh, what you got to trade for that? And my sweet cousin, Teresa, who's in Michigan, she said, hey, Dion, you get to have her there close to you. And I was like, yeah, I've not seen Teresa in a long time. So, Dion, maybe you'll think of something we can trade for the cake. In the meantime, know that I love you. I'm thinking about you. After the uh, video ends, I always go back and write down your prayer request so that we can remember you. And uh, I just can't wait to get my hands on all of you again. I love you so much. God bless you.